Jake, last night we talked about it a little bit before the game here. The third period, Delaware finds themselves in a 4-3 hockey game, two quick goals. Next thing you know, they're out of it. It's something we've seen a few times this season. The Thunder go into the third period in those close game matchups, and they kind of let it slip away. I want the Thunder to get back to what I saw last weekend out of them. They went down, and each of those three games against Port Huron came out on top in two of them. They did lose that second game, but they were down 2 nothing and came back. That's the fight. That's the resiliency I want to see. They've lost eight one-goal games this season. They've lost 13 within two, so it's a close game losses that have dictated this Thunder season. They need to find that resiliency. Right, and looking at some positives from yesterday, because obviously there was. Coach Pence felt like this team played very good yesterday, and we agreed with that. That first line looked really good yesterday. Yeah, Stevens jumping into the lineup, playing alongside Marker and Cangelosi. That's a tall task to ask of a new guy, for sure. I mean, those are two top gunners in this league, especially Ryan Marker. We're going to see a new face on that line tonight, as you mentioned with uh, Shane Morrissey. But I really liked what I saw out of Stevens. He pretty much created that Cangelosi goal that kicked off the Thunder scoring yesterday by putting all that pressure on Yuri Pastuka. So I'm going to look at his speed tonight, and I'm going to be excited to see it. Right, there's a lot to talk about. And on the other end, obviously, there's a couple players to talk about. There's one you like in particular. I like uh, Jacob Schnapp, number six. You'll see him in the corners. You'll see him in front of the net tonight. And you'll see him go into a corner without the puck. Guess what he's coming out with? The, the puck. puck. Oh, I go. know it. And I look to number 20, Tory McLean. Almost forgot his number. He's so big. You just look at him and you get terrified up here in the booth. Scored a goal last night, throws the body around. You know he'll drop the gloves if he has to. Tory McLean is a big problem and could be a big problem again for this Thunder team. Flipping back over to the hometown Delaware Thunder, who's your player to watch tonight? Talked about him on the phone last night at about 2 in the morning, Joe <laughs> Devaney. He's my guy, number 19. Put on a display last weekend, scored one of the nicest goals I've seen all season long. Put up six assists last weekend, tallied another one last night. Expected a big game out of him. Thank you. He's going to turn on the Jets and fly through the neutral zone. Andrasenko tries to open up a shooting lane. He does, and he scores! What a goal by Nikita Andrasenko, and it's 4-3! Am I supposed to talk after that? Oh, my! What a move! Nikita Andrasenko saw the goal by Ford in the first period, said, hold my beer, walks down the ice, makes a brilliant move, fake. Holds, waits, rips it short side high over Paulin. A clean rip. And Nikita Andrasenko, the man of the weekend last weekend, with two game-winning goals, puts the Thunder within one in the third period here tonight. Uh, they made the mistake of letting me back in the booth, but I couldn't think of anybody else I'd rather be sharing it with. Exactly right. As uh, you know, we just snuck back up here for game two, so I put on a suit and I just walked right <laughs> in. Nothing. I couldn't believe it. It was pretty crazy, but. For it, it's a good keep at the blue line, but Oaks, now I apologize, Count Payne came in and out. Right call there by the alignsman. That was awfully close. And talking about awfully close, how about those two tries by the Thunderbirds? That first one down low on the ice. Trevor Babin got the pad there in time, flashing it right in front of Gus Ford, who we talked about potted two last night for his 30th of the season, one of the top scorers in this league, and the top scorer for the Thunderbirds, robbed by Trevor Babin. Thunder to the power play here, a direct result of them starting to change the way this game has been played. Look at them go north-south there. That was Nikita Andrasenko, your guy from last week. You loved talking about him last week. Had two game-winning goals, created that chance for Justin Laporte. I don't think he got as much on that shot as he wanted to. It didn't really leave the ice too much, but now the Thunder have a power play looking to right the ship that was going in the wrong direction before letting up that shorthanded goal. Yeah, like we expected, we talked about in the open, that line, Conway, Butita, and Ford, the one-two punch of the Thunderbirds offense. It's Butita and Ford. Ford with his 31st of the year. Way too much space in that high slot. We saw him score a goal there yesterday. We saw him score a goal off the rush yesterday. He could score from just about anywhere. But by the end of the period, the Thunder looked to settle in a little bit, but it was a Thunderbirds period for sure, as evident by the scoreboard. This one comes out to Devaney. Bouncing puck comes free, and here's another shorthanded chance. Baker got Cardinal with him. Cross ice pass. They score. Tommy Cardinal side of the net, and it's 3-1 Thunderbirds. Well, that'll be the second shorthanded goal of the evening. It'll be the third shorthanded goal of the weekend that the Thunderbirds have scored. It's a tough decision there by Devaney at the offensive blue line. Stepped up, chipped it in to the chest of the Thunderbirds on rusher. And it was a two-on-one with a forward back in Morrissey. And that's a play that two skilled players can exploit there. 
Just two seconds left in the period. Don't think much can come of this faceoff. Paulin did stay in his net. I could be wrong as McLean tries to jam it through Babb and it ends up in the net. But they'll say it's a second too late. All right, how about we uh, we nip the nothing can happen talk in the bud for <laughs> now? Because I think you just jinxed old Trevor Babbitt in the net there. They will say that one doesn't count, but it was a backhand try right off the draw as clean as can be. They made the right call in this announcer's opinion, but awfully close. Well, in eight games against the Thunder that John Butita has played this season, he's got 12 goals, eight assists now, and we're not done with game number eight, so we'll see how that finishes off. But John Butita has been a thorn in the Thunder size, along with his wingman, Gus Ford, who's recorded a goal tonight. He was active on that power play, walking around a few guys like they weren't even there. So fantastic work by that top line. And we saw them right after the Thunder scored their second goal of the game to make the game 4-2 to recover the pressure of this game in favor of the Thunderbirds. Once in a while you take one off the head, but Babin, it seems like one or two a game. You want to know the good news? Off that steel black helmet, you're not even going to see a fuck mark. <laughs> not at all. Just up one goal now in the third that anything going towards the net, they're going to block. Look at the way three guys just collapsed on that pass in front there. That was McLean, Baker, and Powell all collapsing on Bruette there, defending the house. He flings it just wide of Greg Harney. And Tristan McKay picks it up at the near boards. He gave it away to Dawson Baker. Baker on his backhand, always dangerous, spinning to the forehand. Bodies were all in front of Greg Harney. Not sure if he ever saw the shot, but it never got to the net anyway. Basie's got to be shouting there behind the net. He was ready for a pass. McKay didn't know what options he had. Threw it up the wall. Only Thunderbirds waiting for it. Marker's got Morrissey with him. The Thunder just stay on side. Marker, Andrasenko walks in. Backhand. Oh, what a goal by Nikita Andrasenko. And it's 3-1 Thunder! The m, m line joined by Nikita Andrasenko gets it done for a second time this period. It starts with Ryan Marker dishing that one off to Nikita Andrasenko. He walks right in, silky, suave move. Forehand to the backhand right between the wickets of Chris Paul and Thunder double their lead. It's 3-1 courtesy of the ever-hot Nikita Andrasenko. As well. He remains in the penalty box. And Susie, not available right now either. Cangelosi's gonna be to the attack. Two on one with Kyle Stevens. Cangelosi holds, fires, and scores! It's a shorthanded goal for Dan Cangelosi, and it's 5-3. That is a tough break for, that was I believe, Pestuka and McLean. A clearing attempt ended up off the skate of McLean, caromed right to Danny Cangelosi, and he was able to rip that one up and over the glove of Paul and from a good ways out thought he might have a two on one there opts to call his own number and rip that one and he makes the right decision there and that two goal lead is reestablished for the Delaware Thunder. I mean the best way to kill a penalty is to score one of your own we talked about it last night when, when Carolina had the two short handed goals now Delaware returning the favor tonight Dan Cangelosi with a beautiful snipe there and that's a huge momentum boost, because not only are you killing a five-minute major, a non-releasing five-minute major, so all of that is wiped away, and you pad your lead to finish it off. Carolina did come back after that to score a goal to make it 5-4, but nonetheless, a really successful penalty kill, and one that's a big morale booster in a tight game. Dangerous area, blocked on the way through by Lucchese. Two on one out the other way. Lucchese got a lekin with them. Lucchese on the backhand, oh, what a change of pace. And then Paulin made the save with the blocker. Back out in front, it's banked home. Lucchese scores. Lucchese with the block at one end. The rush at the other, breaking the ankles of Yuri Pastuka on the cutback. He knew that block shot stunned him. He knew he didn't have the speed to turn it into a two on one, so he stops on a dime, rips it blocker side. The initial shot is stopped by Paulin, but the second effort looking for a Lekin or any friendly stick backdoor finds a Carolina Thunderbird, caroms in, and we sit at 6 4 with 13 22 to go. Another two goal lead for the Thunder. Ford, great move to get by Bedard, and he works in, and Harney has an incredible answer with the blocker and Bedard's gonna go for a trip. That's the right call, Gus Ford working one-on-one -on -one with a rookie there, exploited that, tried to go inside out, we've seen his hands, hands activated all weekend long, so silky, so soft, 
tries to make the inside move on Charlie Bedard as that penalty box is getting a little bit grabbed. Three Delaware Thunder players in there. That'll be Basie Morrissey now joined by Bedard. It'll be another power play here as so much for that talk of five-on-five five play. We're not 30 seconds in, and it's a Carolina man advantage. 